Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCT and PBS SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LAist on a daily reporter roundup. Chava, the Lakers won last night. You were at Staples Center. What did you see? Yeah, I went out last night to see how Angelinos were celebrating the victory, and what I saw was what felt like a big catharsis. You know, despite multiple pleas from the city officials to celebrate from home, hundreds of people from all over Los Angeles came out to Staples Center to celebrate the team's first win in 10 years. People were really, really excited. Fireworks lit up the sky, fans embraced and danced below. People stuck in traffic hanging out of car windows, cheering, waving flags, and twirling their jerseys in the air. One fan grabbed me as I was photographing and said, this one's for all of us. For some I spoke to, the win was bigger than this current moment. This win felt like a tribute to Kobe Bryant. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. The Orange County District Attorney is investigating homemade unofficial ballot drop boxes set up at churches, political party offices, and retail locations. Libby has more on that. These boxes also popped up in Los Angeles and Ventura counties. They looked like metal filing cabinets, but they were labeled to resemble county sanctioned ballot containers. They were set up apparently with the encouragement of the California Republican Party in some highly contested congressional districts. Secretary of State Alex Padilla sent a memo on Sunday clarifying that fake drop boxes like these are illegal. And the guidance adds that violation of the state's election code carries a penalty of up to four years in prison. Official ballot drop boxes boxes are overseen by county elections officials and include security measures such as tamper evidence seals. Now, ballot collection or ballot harvesting is legal in California, but it requires a person to sign over their ballot to an individual who pledges to turn it in to elections officials within 72 hours. A California GOP spokesman downplayed the Dropbox controversy in a statement, and that statement says that Democratic anger is overblown. There's a new UCLA report on the financial implications of films with diverse casts and stories. The researchers focus on a metric they call authentically inclusive representation. And John is here to help explain it. Yeah, Hollywood executives say they want to be more inclusive, even if they still come up short. Now there might be more motivation. This new study from UCLA finds that by being more diverse, the movie business can be more principled and more profitable. UCLA's Center for Scholars and Storytellers looked at more than 100 recent releases. And thanks to films like Black Panther, Coco, and Crazy Rich Asians, films with diverse casts typically generate a better return on investment than those without. But the researchers warn that studios must define inclusion beyond a numerical hiring scorecard. In other words, a film not only has to include diverse talent in front of and behind the camera, but also must tell a culturally relevant story that avoids stereotypes. And that's what UCLA calls authentically inclusive representation. And if Hollywood really wants to do that, the study concluded, it really must empower a lot more diverse filmmakers. And finally today, we invited Clarice back from Asian Journal. She just wrote a longer story about the history of social justice activism in the Filipino community. And I wonder if you could tell us more about what you found. Yeah, so Filipino American History Month is celebrated every October for two reasons. One, it commemorates the anniversary of the first documented landing of Filipinos in the year 1587. The second reason is that it honors the birthday of fabled labor leader um, Larry Itliong, who, along with Cesar Chavez, provided the foundation for labor rights movements in the 1930s. And that latter reason really provides the Filipino American National Historical Society with the basis for this year's Filipino American History Month theme, which is circulated around social justice. 2020 was a year that continues to be marked by tragedy division, confusion, and the Filipino American community, like other ethnic communities, is unpacking its own history, which is rooted in civil rights. So this Filipino American History Month is really tailored around that idea that we all have a role to play in social justice, whether that's attending a protest safely, donating to different social causes, hosting fundraisers. So in short, the significance of Filipino American History Month lies in remembering the history of civil rights in our community, while also making sure to carry that legacy of social justice present me and in the future. Well, thank you, Clarice, and thank you all at the KPCC and LA's newsroom, and thank you for tuning in. Take care of your health, your family, your neighbor. We will see you tomorrow.